It is time for my favorite end of the breach topic, speed running. I've been looking forward to doing this episode more than any of the others, especially because you can ignore half of the things that I was telling you as none of them are important when you're doing speed runs and end of the breach. But we'll get right into that. I'm excited. Let's do this thing. So what's the deal about speed running into the breach? You might just be thinking, it's just a matter of playing it quickly, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, that's the whole idea. Try to get through the game as quickly as possible. Now, some of the categories may have been updated and changed since this video was made, but I dropped a link below into the actual speedrun page where you can figure out, find out what the current categories are and what you should do. We'll try to have uh, in more information dropped on that page as things actually do change. There's a couple things, no matter what those categories say, that you need to make sure you are paying attention to right off the bat. And the first is in options. Make sure your combat speed, which is about right here, moves all the way up and to the right. You need to have that combat speed going as quickly as possible. Turn off the tutorial tips and the end turn confirmation will save you um, some actual headaches. You're gonna to wanna to turn on the game timer UI. That just helps to verify your run. Not a necessity, but it's actually very nice to have in there as well. Another recommendation that I have is for colorblind mode. Let me show you the difference real quick. I'm actually gonna turn that off. This will be the standard way that you're actually looking at playing the game. So here I'm using the Rift Walkers, and you can see I've got a Scion on there, I've got a regular Firefly, and I can actually see that I have uh, the an Alpha, because I'm taking the time to look at it, Mac, and I can see in you know this nice color of gray and red where they are attacking when you're doing speed running it's really easy to miss that someone is an alpha or where they're actually attacking because it is so nice with the colors one thing you can do if i actually come here i'm going to actually turn on the colorblind mode you'll instantly see the difference now the area that's being attacked is highlighted in a nice purple and i have this nice rank insignia next to anything that is a alpha and the leaders have a little skull next to them much easier from a quick perspective to identify what type of vec are attacking you I actually leave it turned on all the time now, I've gotten very used to it, but it's a quick way of identifying and since speed is of the essence, you're making snap decisions, you want to make sure you've turned that on in settings right away. The other thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the actual hotkeys. Before you can get done speedrunning, I'd recommend going through a couple of casual runs using your hotkeys so that you can more effectively toggle between the actual mechs. Yes, you can click and then attack, etc. But that is ridiculously slow. You want to be able to select your mechs and select your actions as quickly as possible. This is, I have actually rebound my keys to fit appropriately with my style. This is not the same between every single runner. Everyone's got their own style, but I found this works pretty well. I put mech one as one, mech two as two, mech three as three. So it's easy to remember they go down one, two, three on the left-hand side. Then I've mapped four as my primary weapon and five as my secondary weapon with repair being R. Now, if you look at your keyboard, you're gonna notice that keeps your left hand pretty well on one, two, three, and then your uh, index finger can move over to five or down to repair as needed. So all your attacks are on your index finger with those three keys, and your mechs are your pinky, your ring, and your middle finger with one, two, and three, respectively. You also wanna make sure you have end turn set to the space bar, because then your thumb can rest on the space bar bash that space bar when it's end turn. You don't have to really move your left hand and everything is always ready to go. So one more thing before you actually hit start, you cannot have a pilot that has been on a previous mission. You will know because the pilot who's on a previous mission will be outlined in purple. I'll actually show you what that looks like on one of my other files. If I go over to my hard mode, I grab a new game, you'll see I've got Kazak here who has experience. He's outlined in purple. I cannot bring this pilot on a speed run. It has to be a brand new pilot. I'd highly recommend utilizing a different profile for your speed run. Now there is a command that you can drop, uh, in a couple commands you can drop into console. If you don't want to know what those are, I'm not going to tell them now for spoilers, but spoilers, they are below. You can pull up the console with tilde, type them in, and you can unlock the whole file. So you don't have to go through unlocking everything again just for the purpose of speed running. But let's go on in. If I'm going to be grabbing, I need to make sure I grab a new pilot. I can simply do that by coming in, changing time tra traveler, and even picking the same one again. He's not outlined in purple. He has no experience. We're good to go. Can obviously still assign him wherever I want. Timing will start when I hit the start button. So you give yourself a little countdown on your, on your timer. And yes, you do have to use a timer. I got a link below on where you can find information on downloading Live Split. Uh, which I have actually set up. Let me actually bring up Live Split for you. 
There we go, now I've got the timer pulled up for you. So that's what you can set up something like that in live split. How you split is up to you. You could have just the timer up there if you want, but I like to see my actual splits between island. So the timer would actually start here when I would say three, two, one, and go. I'll show you what that looks like. So, and three, two, one, and go. There we go, I would now have a timer. I'm actually not going to actually time this, but I'll show you exactly what to do. The idea is quickly here, flip through your islands. Now, what you really want to be looking for in a two island run specifically is I want to make sure I can take out um, the, I don't need to necessarily take out, I'm not going for perfect. I want something that's not going to be difficult to manage on the final island. The blob is the absolute easiest leader to take out on the final island. You simply move him around, don't attack him, and you do not get many other vec. Easy, easy to go through. I do not want to have spiders. Whatever you do, do not grab the spider island. They throw so many extra vec on the board, it's nearly impossible to really control that, and you spend a lot more turn. The thing that eats away your time the most is vec turns. You want to, as much as possible, have no vec on the board sitting on top of spawning. The ideal, though, island setup is Godetrius followed by RST for a speedrun. So what I will do first is check those two. If both of those are fine, I will grab them right away. If the spider was here, I would go possibly first Detrius and then Archive. Pinnacle, I tend to stay away from other than four islands as they tend to be the slowest. You have a lot more area effects that take more time. Decided to switch it up. We'll show you an example exactly what I'm talking about here over in Zenith. I pulled in the Zenith Guard here, went over to Pulse and Dialsan, and we can see here there's this seismic activity. I'm going to show you exactly why this one is absolutely terrible for your speedrun. What happens is at the beginning of every turn, this animation, this one's not so terrible. That animation will happen every single time. In a game where seconds count, having something where I'm I'm not able to effectively um, just go between turn and turn, that animation of having that fall away eats away precious seconds. So you definitely do not want to have anything where you have that environmental uh, impact happening at all. And there is one exception to that, and I'll find it for you here really quickly. Okay, I had to do a little bit of hunting, but I found it for you. Here is the only one, this only happens in RST Corporation, where you want to grab one with environmental effect, and that's the Cataclysm, and I'll show you exactly why. And I actually covered this in one of my other tutorial videos, that from a casual play perspective, this is one you want to look for. Even though there's that little bit of animation, there is only four turns available, and your ability to really control Vex spawning becomes amazing in this specific mission. So I can get on top of those, no more Vex spawning, both of those guys will take a little bit of damage here, but that's just fine. I can go over here and block this Vex spawning point, and we can just be done. I actually need to heal him up, that was unnecessary, but now I'm going to get a free pass this very last turn. And uh, let's just move my guys off of here. Unfortunately, I lose. There we go. Wouldn't have almost lost my pilot there. But you see, I can get through that level very quickly without much Vec interaction. One, because that drop-off happens. Two, I get on top of Vex spawning. And three, it's only four turns. That's one of the two missions you want to really look out for. Defend the train. This is the other one that you want to grab, actually for exactly the same reason. There's a tiny little animation of the train moving, but it's only its victory in four turns. Another reason why this one is great is the train actually becomes a ballistic missile that can actually help to take out uh, said... Alright, I'm, so now I'm coming up on the very last turn here. Obviously the thing I'm going to do is walk over here. You know, I, the, the thing I want to do is walk over here and take this guy out. Now, there is a little bit of a play to do that. There's a little bit of play also just to hit spacebar and end turn because he's not going to kill me anyways. I'm going to take the couple of seconds with the laser mech to go ahead and take him out as his attack animation is actually faster than the enemy attack animation. That's a whole other point about optimizing on what's actually the fastest that you'll get the more that you play through. But I'm going to go and attack this just to show you at the very end. After I hit end turn here, as soon as the U, as soon as soon any remaining back start to disappear off the board and the UI around here starts to go away, I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to hit continue and that's going to save the animation that you saw last time at the end of the game where it plays the little music and it waits for a little bit and then it goes to the end screen. So instead, we're going to hit space, enemy turn, 
UI starts going away, hit main menu, continue, and I'm brought right to here. That saves about six seconds every single region that you go into. So you absolutely want to do that. Also, the thing to note is I am definitely not going to be focusing on getting a perfect island. I actually once successfully got a perfect island just by coincidence. But you do not want to get a perfect, you don't necessarily need to get a perfect island because you're not going to be taking much damage. You're going to be going fast enough and really eliminating the Vec having the ability to attack you. That that's not really going to be much of an issue. Hey, hey, time capsule incoming. Now, everyone absolutely loves time capsules, and I get it. Not, not great at all, though, for what we're doing here. You actually, actually want to get rid of the time capsules, if at all possible. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is sit here and destroy it. The reason being is that it actually takes away time to show the collection of a time capsule going, opening it up, and continue. You lose about three or four seconds, and you're not going to be able to effectively use that time capsule anyways. So the overall tips about speedrunning, obviously learn the keyboard shortcuts, use those as much as possible, pick the right regions, and don't do just showing you another example. As much as you'd be tempted to do something like this so that you could really maximize on your ability to control the VEC, this takes so much time to have things like airstrikes, especially the lightning storm takes forever. You don't want to do it. Don't do that. Resist the urge to go in and as much as possible, you know, pick these environmental elements. You just don't want to do that. That will slow you way too far down. So that's speed running into the breach, guys. I am a little bit sad because that means this brings us to the end of the series, the Into the Breach tutorial series. If you missed any of the other ones and want to know how to up your game, I've got the link below to the whole playlist. You can check that out. You can also find me on Twitch. I tend to play a lot of Into the Breach, so feel free to find me there. Uh, it's been a pleasure being here with you guys, and I'm really looking forward to talking to you later. Bye!